Miss Aurora is back. Secured entrepreneurs. <laughs> you all have kept Miss Aurora extremely busy. I want to thank everyone who has come on board in the month of July already. And those of you who are on the calendar, I see you. I'm looking forward to working with you. All right. In this video, Miss Aurora is going to get into why it is that sole proprietorship is outdated. Last week, John brought on three ladies who really believed that they had not only a bona fide business, but a protected bona fide business. And they quickly found out that they had been ultimately deceived. Okay. So let's get into why it is sole proprietorship is outdated and how it is you're going to now go from sole proprietor to CEO. Can we do it? All right. So for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you build six and seven figure tax free businesses. You heard that right. Stick around. We all know that this is the secured entrepreneur movement. All right now secured entrepreneurs one of the young ladies who came on board last week she did create a limited liability company with one of the online agencies that we know are out here she created this limited liability company in the state that she lives in which does not have any privacy enactment so that was the first nail in the coffin okay secondly she is in a hands-on type of business where she's most likely to be sued for something. Okay. So she's conducting her business affairs as normal. She sells a product. All right. A few weeks after she sold the product, the customer came back and said that they wanted to return the product, but uh, clearly she has a uh, return policy, which stated that I, I guess it was after 30 days she would not be able to return this product. The product was actually used. What was she going to do with it? She's not like a store where she can just chuck off the item, you know, as a used item. What was she going to do with it? Okay. So she gets into it with this client and how many of the secure entrepreneurs have had an incident like this. Okay. And the client then says, well, I'm going to sue you because I actually had an adverse effect from this uh, item. Okay. And this whole thing went down. The next thing you know, this young lady does get a summons and complaint. So she gets this summons and complaint. She's in fear out of her mind. She does not know what to do. She's having a plethora of thoughts. And how many of you know, first you're thinking, okay, this can't be real. This is impossible. Okay. I still don't have the proof that this woman has suffered these things, but it's all attached in this summons and complaint and all of this. So now you have to muster up that retainer for an attorney that you need to now hire to answer this summons and complaint because you don't know how to do it yourself. This is very real. Okay. Now, how many of the secured entrepreneurs know that the minimum that you're going to give an attorney to assist you with anything like this is $5,000. So now she spends this $5,000 long story short, only to find out that she loses this case because the customer did have evidence that she had an adverse effect from this hands-on product that the young lady made. Okay. Nightmare. The very first thing that she shared with me was she really did not believe that this could happen because she had an LLC and she believed that she was going to be able to be protected. She thought she was separate from her assets, her money. She, she thought that she was going to catch a win. And maybe this attorney that she hired did say that to her. I don't know. I was not there. Here's where we're going today. Secured entrepreneurs. The bottom line is you have to have two individuals inside of your limited liability company to take advantage of the limited liability that is being offered in that structure. If in fact you stated that you are a single member LLC, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? So it's, so the whole thing was wrong. The whole thing was filed entirely wrong. And this young lady, unfortunately took a major loss. Let us not have those situations happening to us secured entrepreneurs. Well, the secured entrepreneurs, we don't have those situations because we are properly structured. Okay. So the very first thing that I want to share as it relates to why the sole proprietorship is outdated is due to the limited liability. You don't have any. Okay. This young lady's assets were risked. Okay. She lost money. She had to, she had to pay the attorney. The $5,000 was just the retainer. Okay. That was just the retainer. She ended up spending about $15,000 to, to find out that she owed this lady money. Okay. To which they had a moderate amount. She has a payment plan. She's able to pay. Okay. I don't know why they didn't just leave it at the, the damages in which she, she, she reported, but you know that that's how it happens. Okay. And do not believe that it cannot happen to you. Okay. The second thing that I'm going to get on here is the raising of the capital because see now this became another issue for this young lady because now how am I going to get the money to pay this woman? I don't even have a business structure that puts me in a position to get the cash or even the credit that I need to turn into cash to answer the financial damages as a result of this lawsuit. You know that as a sole proprietor, you are using your own name, your own social security number, you're getting personal loans, okay, to fuel a non-existent business because you have not set this business up properly at all. The third thing I'm gonna go with here is, are the tax advantages. You don't have any, okay? Because all of, the, all of the secured entrepreneurs already know that when you are operating as a sole proprietorship, a sole proprietor, which is why Mr. Rohr always says sole proprietorship is trash. Sole proprietorship is trash, okay? Because what are you doing? You're paying an additional 15 to 16% tax to state that you are self-employed. You're paying a self-employment tax, okay? And then you got some people who talk you into, well, just become an S corp, put yourself on the payroll. Well, now you're paying, you know, yourself as an employee and you're paying the taxes as an employee. Like it's, it's, I don't know where the thought processes are. I don't know why there, there are too many people who don't want to get into what the internal revenue service states that you can actually do how it is. You can actually operate properly in commerce to legally avoid all of that. The fourth thing I want to get on is growth and scalability. You don't have any because one of the things that we, we specialize in here, we're all for the solopreneur. Now you can be a solopreneur all you want to, but you really should not look like a solopreneur in the public. You have to have a certain image, a certain prestige to appear as if, you know, there's a whole lot going on here. I'm just not a solopreneur and your business structure is going to prove that when it is you have done this correctly. Now I really feel for all three of the ladies, but this, this one particular young lady got it the worst out of the three. She had it the worst. The other two had other issues as it relates to, uh, ruining their personal credit, trying to fuel a startup. They would, they got a lot of personal credit. Okay. One of them actually did a whole PPP thing during the pandemic stating that she employed her children. So she, she got some monies, she invested those monies, but it turns out that she wasn't structured to a, to a point where she could carry that on. She couldn't scale. She couldn't go anywhere because she didn't have the proper credentialing for a business to get to where she has been trying to get to all of this time. Okay. So for all three of the ladies, we put a wealth cycle together that is now going to be much better and provide all of the things that they actually need to be out here in business because we see where the world is going. We see where we're going here. So if, if you don't have some type of a business that is cash flowing, many people are just not going to make it. Let's, we're going to keep it. We, we, we're adults here on this channel and we keep it real here. If you don't have some type of income stream that is cash flowing, you may be an individual who will not make it financially. You won't make it. 
Okay. So I want to take it to, I want to take it to some slides so that I can show the visitors here, the entrepreneurs, and please share this video, please like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. If you have not something, okay. Because Mr. Rory is here to teach you how to go from sole proprietor to CEO. And let me uh, show you some things right now. All right. Now secured entrepreneurs, here we go. For those of you who are not familiar with what we do over here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement, we follow the Robert Kiyosaki philosophy, okay? So what was I saying to you? Robert goes into the type of taxation the employee pays. He gets into the tax for the self-employed. This is the sole proprietor right here, okay? So what was I just describing to you a few moments ago? You're either here as a sole proprietor with that single member LLC, okay, which is totally constructed incorrectly. And you are paying either self-employment tax or you take a tax election and you begin to pay yourself uh, as an employee. Okay, this is what we see happening generally. But here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement, we go from so proprietor to CEO. How are we doing that? We are the business owner. We create systems that allow us to utilize every tax deferral strategy known to man. Okay. We have the opportunity to utilize properly structured legal entities that allow us to do what the internal revenue service tells us we can do, which is defer taxation. All right. So we come on down here as the owner where we are the CEO. So that's the gist of what I'm about to show you in this next slide, how it is you're going to come away from the sole proprietorship, which is outdated because it's costly and it's harmful. It's costing you and it's harming you financially, whether you are aware of that or not, because the problem that we continuously see is that you get talked into doing things this way and then something does happen which causes you to go looking for a solution so we're attempting to catch you before you have a problem <laughs> okay that's what we do here in the secured entrepreneur movement let's go to the next slide so now that you understand that we are the business owner going down into the ceo which is the investor right so as the business owner we are creating the systems. So the system is going to start with a comprehensive business structure. And how we like to start it is with an entity that allows us to have anonymity. You must be properly structured at all times. So we're going to create this entity that allows us to be anonymous because we want to protect ourselves. Remember, Ms. Aurora's motto is protecting your business starts before you open for business, okay? So we're set up here, we're set up here, and then we get into role clarification, okay? Because we need the key individuals that are going to help us go, flow, and grow, right? The mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs make is they're going to state that they are a member-managed uh, entity. That is not what we do here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement. The member is always going to pay some type of tax. Whenever you see a member, there's a sole proprietor lurking, okay? You're going to pay tax either on the self-employment end or the employee end. So you didn't do anything different. You didn't leave your job to actually have a business. You left your job to go into another job, okay? You gave yourself a job, all right? So the role clarification, we are the manager. Uh, we create manager-managed entities that are anonymous okay and then you've got your banking clarification because what happens now you're going to be able to bank properly you're going to sign that signature card the correct way you will not sign the signature card as a member you will always only sign the signature card as a manager and a lot of people say well you know how am i going to pay myself okay if you're thinking about paying yourself you are not on the wealth frequency if you're thinking about paying yourself you've already lost that is that is a lose a lose that's a new word a new way to put that word a lose <laughs> okay you have already lost you have to come out of that you are the manager you manage you have the authority to take what is known as a draw to have access to whatever monies are needed and and to uh pay for the things that 
belong to this entity. Pay for the things that this entity has come into contractual agreement in to pay for. Okay, please understand that. I just want to make that clear. That's what Miss Aurora wants to share in today's video. Please know that sole proprietorship is outdated. It is harmful to you financially. All right. It, it, it's harmful to you, period. Please do not go there with yourself. So you all know you can find me, Miss Aurora Day, at AuroraDayConsulting.com. And until next time, 